Yeah, thank you and good afternoon to all of you. Joining me today on this call is Mr. Jayesh Shah, Chief Ex uh, Executive Director and Group CFO. Mr. Jay Suresh, who is the Managing Director of our Arvind Fashion Business and also Kaushal Shah, who is our Investor Relations Officer. Before I get into the performance of our key business, I would like to share the update on the demerger process, which all of us would be aware of. We have received the NCLT approval for the demerger and the certified order is expected in next few days. The demerger will become effective by end of this month. We expect Irwin Fashions and Anoop Engineering, the two new companies, to be listed by early February 2019. The reported financials this quarter as a result of the demerger order will show revenue, expenses and profits of continuing Irwin Limited business and the profit of the tax will include of the demerging business as well. However, for the purpose of the analysis, we will use consolidated figures which will ignore the impact of the demerger. In terms of the results, I am pleased to report that all our businesses delivered strong sales growth this quarter and consolidated revenues increased by 11% and overall EBITDA improved by one percentage point to 9.1%. Branded apparel grew by 13% after adjusting for NAS. This performance is particularly good when taken in the overall retail market context, which was marked by weak consumer sentiment and the base effect, which resulted from Diwali being late. So a lot of the Diwali sales will be booked in the next quarter. And the summer EOSS, which started earlier, so it got shifted to the Q1. Power brands continued their stellar performance and grew by 13%. Innerwear business saw 33% growth. Overall EBITDA in branded apparel expanded by 50 basis points in addition to the planned 40% increase in the marketing spend. Textile revenues grew by 6%. This was driven by double digit growth in revenues from two of our segments, wovens and garments. Textile margins were slightly subdued as a result of lower drawback rates and higher than planned preoperative costs in some of our newer garmenting facilities. As a recap, I'd like to just uh, remind that the company had started multiple greenfield sites in Gujarat, Jharkhand, AP and Karnataka, which will expand our garmenting capacity almost 3x to 90 million pieces over next three years. Advanced materials, which will also be part of Urban Limited, <coughs> grew by 21% and saw its EBITDA increase sharply to rupees 14 crores for the quarter as operating leverage kicked in more mature part of its portfolio. The business had clogged revenues of 487 crores last year and had a negative EBITDA of 7 crores for the whole of last year. So this business has started to break even and turn in small uh, positive EBITDA. We are on track on this business to reach 900 to 1,000 crore revenue run rate next year. Our engineering business also delivered healthy financial results at revenues of Rs. 48.2 crores and EBITDA of 18.4 crores, partly driven by the favorable exchange rate movements. Our overall consolidated net debt at the end of the quarter was Rs. 3,562 crore we do not anticipate any significant change in this number in the current financial year. Now looking forward, we continue to remain positive about the growth and improvement in profitability for each of these businesses. We expect the demerged Urban Limited to grow at 10% for the full year, very much in line with the earlier estimate we had put out. Uh, post demerger what will happen is urban limited will consist of textiles advanced materials and few other smaller businesses of these textiles will grow at 5 to 6% which is slightly lower than what we had guided earlier and i will elaborate on this a bit more shortly right so textiles will grow slightly lower advanced materials will actually grow slightly higher and set off the textile impact and we are confident that we'll be able to maintain the 10% growth target 
along with improving profitability by 1%. So what's going to happen is that the higher profitability from AMD, advanced materials, and reduced investments in urban intranet will enable the DMERS urban limited to see an EBITDA improvement of 1% for the entire year. Now, like I said, I'll elaborate a bit more on what's going on with the textile market and the guidance around that, right? So specifically, denim is a very oversupplied situation in India for a few quarters, and it continues to do so. We are also seeing that there are significant working capital challenges, especially in the trade channel in denim. In addition, what we have observed is that the Q2 has not been the strongest of the quarters for many of the brands and retailers, and we are expecting and seeing reduced orders for Q3. However, we believe that volumes will come to normal levels in Q4. In addition, we are currently implementing several garmenting projects, which I mentioned earlier on the call. Some of them have got delayed by a few months. And hence, we are looking at the growth in the garment numbers as 20% as opposed to what we had thought 35% earlier. So this will have slight impact on the margin as well. <clears throat> on the currency side, we have one more quarter of hedges below rupees 70. From Q4, we will start getting almost the full benefit of the rupee depreciation. We expect our branded apparel business to grow by around 20% and see margin improvement of up to 100 BPS for the full year. The engineering business will grow by 10 to 12% and maintain its healthy margins as earlier. So that's briefly in a nutshell my opening remarks. Now I invite you to ask any questions which myself or my colleagues will answer. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may kindly press star 1 on your touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rishabh Parikh from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Just a few questions. Uh, one is, uh, you know, uh, your uh, uh, power brand's EBITDA margin, uh, year on year, even though it grew 13% in revenue, there was a 30 basis points decline in EBITDA margin. Um, so sh is that, should we understand that, uh, you know, 13, 13.5% is peak margins for power brands? Why? Uh, I'll just take this question, uh, this ratio. Uh, as far as power brands is concerned, um, as we had stated at the beginning of the year, uh, we want to increase the advertisement uh, spend uh, because I think these brands are now doing exceedingly well and establishing leadership position in the specific categories like casual and uh, denim wear. Uh, we want to increase that uh, lead um, in terms of being a dominant uh, number one player in the casual and denim wear space. So we have actually increased our advertisement spend to the tune of 0.9%, 0.9% uh, 9 900 basis point in the current uh, quarter. So you will see this uh, playing out in the current year and probably uh, a little bit of next year. And uh, definitely 13% is not the peak uh, margin for power brands. Uh, we had uh, earlier guided, you know, it's going to be around 15% as we yep. Uh, yep. move towards 20 and 21. I think we still stand by that. I think uh, it's a question of, you know, the other thing is um, uh, we are seeing a huge traction uh, in terms of US Polo in uh, Hopefully, I think we should cross even 100 crore mark uh, this year. Uh, we are also investing in separate, you know, advertisement behind uh, Innerware as well. Right. So, 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 but just to recap, till FY20, we can see margin stabilizing at about 13% and then following that it can go up again. No, no, I am talking about uh, moving towards 15% by FY20. Okay, 15%. Okay, thank you. And my second question is, uh, you know, uh, Unlimited has not seen much growth in revenue uh, quarter on quarter. So is this because of the Diwali effect that you mentioned? Uh, the main uh, effect, of course, is the Diwali effect. And uh, second also is we have done some rationalization in terms of, you know, we still had some Megamart uh, stores. Mm. Uh, we did some uh, closures of the store. And also in terms of uh, expansion, we have entered a new market, uh, uh, which is Punjab. 
uh, which also, you know, uh, so we had a certain startup uh, cost in terms of setting up the operations in a new market as well as uh, increased spend behind uh, advertising. Uh, so these all impacted and also uh, there has been certain delay in opening of the store. As we had said that uh, this year is going to be a year of aggressive store expansion. Uh, we had planned a certain number of stores in the first uh, half, which we could not do due to uh, some delays and some mall opening and uh, real estate not getting uh, ready. So that impacted the growth of Unlimited in quarter two. And uh, we are well on course. Uh, I mean, if you look at the festival, uh, that is the current month, I think we are well on course for back to a much you know, larger growth as we had uh, indicated, 20% plus growth as we had indicated earlier. Okay. And uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, your non-power brands, your uh, EBITDA loss in non-power brands was 23 crores in Q1, which has become 19 crores in Q2. So just wanted to check if we still hold our guidance of breaking even across all our brand portfolio uh, by the end of FY19. Uh, in fact, you know, we are positive on uh, emerging brands. Uh, we had delivered uh, 3 crores EBITDA in uh, the emerging brands, you know, in the current uh, year, I mean current uh, quarter. Uh, we still have a marginal loss. We do a gap and uh, Sephora business, we say as a specialty retail business. There we have a certain uh, marginal loss in uh, gap in business, which is also we are substantially reduced. Uh, so we definitely hold the guidance on uh, emerging brands that, you know, it will be uh, positive. Mm -hmm. um, so there is no difference in that guidance. Actually, we are positive on emerging brands as far as quarter two is concerned. So this three crore is non-GAAP and non-Sephora emerging brands, right? That's right, yeah. And, you know, lastly, in the other segment of Arvind Limited, just wanted to understand why there is so much volatility in revenue and EBITDA. Um, if you look at Q2 FY18, the other segment had a revenue of 64 crores which became 160 crores this year and you know the the loss in others became a profit this year so just wanted to understand what is the sustainable uh, number for others in terms of revenue and EBITDA so, uh, <coughs> so the uh, you know the others uh, include uh, various uh, newer businesses which are in some sense not predictable uh, because we are uh, doing a lot of uh, things which are, uh, some of them are in experimental stage as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, to give a guidance on others would be difficult. However, one business which is uh, doing extremely well uh, of late within others is our effluent treatment business, which uh, uh, last year had a revenue of about uh, uh, about 100 crores. But this year, it is expected to do over 300 crores because they have got series of orders which they are implementing. Uh, it's also a healthy margin business. Uh, and as a result, you will see even the profitability and as a result, the other uh, numbers looking good. We believe that this trend which you see in quarter two will continue for quarter three. We are also aggressively now growing this business across the world. Uh, however, uh, to put a number, because it's a very new business, and to put a guidance on that would be difficult right now, but uh, uh, but we are very, very, I think, happy with what's happening with that business, uh, and it is something which, uh, you know, we would like to pursue it very seriously. Right, and so just one clarification, the others EBITDA or, uh, does not include any FX profit or loss, right, this, this quarter? Right. But it is not a segment. All the FX-related stuff would come in textiles. Okay, 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 so, okay. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Malik Patel from Equity Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, few questions. One is that how much confidence we have. I'm um, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Patel. If you could use the handset, sir, we can't hear you clearly. Yeah, I will. So, what is the yeah. confidence level for achieving this 20% top line growth in the brand? Because in this quarter, the numbers were close to around 12-30%. When the previous quarter, the numbers were around around 15-16%. So, I think for the second half to report on a 20% growth for the full year, we have to do at least more than 20%. 
Uh, see, uh, see, in terms of the growth, actually, the you know, first half growth for us is community uh, growth is around 17%. Uh, so we are 3% shy of our um, committed, you know, 20% growth. And that primarily happened also because uh, we had uh, targeted a slightly higher growth in unlimited uh, because of opening of the store, which didn't happen in uh, quarter two. So we are expecting a sharper growth uh, happening in unlimited in um, quarter three because of two reasons. One is the... Uh, the opening of stores which got delayed as they have opened and the second also is the festival uh, coming in the current uh, quarter. So then um, with the same trend, you know, continuing in uh, Q4, uh, we are targeting a higher growth in Q2, Q3 and Q4 so that we come back to 20% growth by end of the year. And because of this INR depreciation, is there any way the, the margin of the, some of the products which we import, particularly in the Gap and some of the newer brands, is impacted? Uh, it's much uh, smaller today because uh, our imports have substantially come down. Uh, even in the case of Gap, uh, in uh, spring summer we will have almost 62, almost 65 percent uh, locally, you know, uh, sourced. Uh, there is an impact uh, definitely, but uh, that's a very very small uh, impact. And if you can explain this nine crore of the GST credit loss, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, so, uh, you know, there are two, uh, changes which are, uh, which are, one has come and which is, one is likely to come. Uh, in textile, as you know that there is a, uh, uh, inverted duty structure because a lot of our inputs are at a rate higher than 5% whilst our output rate is 5%. So we end up having uh, extra credits, uh, uh, which is an inverted duty, uh, as, as it is called. Uh, till, till I think August or some month, I forget is whether it was August or July, uh, for starting from the GST implementation till August, uh, the, the rule was that this inverted duty for textile will not be refunded. Uh, in August, uh, the government, uh, after a lot of representation, agreed that they will refund the inverted duties which are uh, which are uh, paid by the textile industry. However, they made uh, another provision at that point in time, saying that for the earlier period, uh, this will not be re uh, refunded or will not be allowed to be carried forward. So effectively, they they said that we need to write it off. Now, uh, the, there are there are a lot of complications in calculating that uh, that uh, rate, and the circular is very new. So based on the advice from the auditors, we made an ad hoc provision. We might have to make some smaller provision again on this account once the uh, final audit gets done of the GST numbers. The other law which has not come but may come because uh, that's what uh, the, it has been put uh, in the in the government uh, uh, i think it is a, it is a bill has already been introduced is to deny to textile industry gst uh, or sorry the excise duty which was paid in the pre gst era uh, to be carried forward into gst uh, account now, this is not yet passed, but we expect that this may get passed, though there is a lot of representation currently being made. As a result, if you see in our guidance note that we have given uh, in the review note, we have written that there may be an effect of this which may come if and when this gets passed. So these are the two reasons why we believe uh, um, there are there could be some these exceptional one-time write-offs that may come. Okay, I got it. And uh, on the textile again, um, I think in our early opening comments, Samir mentioned that uh, the benefits of the rupee depreciation will come from the Q4. I think there is a one more quarter where the HEs are still there and the realization could be below 70. Right. But, yeah, among uh, the total turnover of close to around uh, you know, 6,000 crore, how much is in a pure export? I think pure export in terms of an uh, USD export, excluding the, the the export which we do from the, the Ethiopia, where we do not have a benefit of the rupee depreciation on that side. I mean, limited exports from India 
uh, or, we, or the entire textile business from India, the export is uh, net export minus import, which is the net flow is about $400 million. $400 million, so which could be close to around 2800 crore rupees, so 50% of the revenue. Uh, so our revenue as a company is 7000 plus crore this year, uh, going by the current run rates. Uh, so this would be slightly below 50, it will be like 45. Yeah, 40%. Yeah. Okay. okay. And that once uh, you get to higher of uh, this rupee depreciation of let's say 72, 73 kind of an exchange rate, what kind of impact that will have on a margin in the view of the cotton price movement? <laughs> uh, so there are, it's a, it can be a big uh, two-way table. <laughs> based on what can be the price and what could be the cotton impact. Uh, but today, if you look at the MSPs and the current cotton prices, and if we were to take a, a, a view as to where the cotton prices are headed, the as it looks that cotton is not too bullish, in, it's not in a bullish phase right now. Uh, though as of today, arrivals have been delayed in India, uh, but we don't see it to be in a very, very uh, bullish phase for the current uh, season or coming season. Uh, so taking current prices, uh, obviously, uh, you know, you would uh, get 2 to 3 percent improvement or slightly more improvement in margin for the export mm -hmm. business if, if things were, everything else were to remain static. Mm -hmm. So, if I assume that, uh, let's say on the higher side of 3% of margin on an export business, so overall margin can go up by almost 1.2, 1 1.3% because 40% of the revenue is in approximately export. So, you know, uh, to look at, uh, you know, uh, on, a, on a medium term, and uh, why I'm, I, I'm, I'm wanting to elaborate this is that a lot of questions or issues or concerns may be there as to why the textile margins are due right now. We are in a very massive phase of uh, investment in the garment, in the garment side. Now, as we, as we do and we believe that this is one of the most strategic moves that the, on the textile side that we are doing, over next two years, you will see a good amount of, you know, uh, inefficiencies in profitability coming in because you would be investing but not getting any returns for that. So not only margin but also the return on capital employed will remain subdued. subdued. Uh, I would say that we are paying about couple of percentages right now for the future uh, from the margin. And that, that trend will continue as we are going to be continuously investing for next couple of years. Uh, apart from that, uh, there is this uh, uh, two things have happened. Uh, one, of course, uh, when we are looking at like to like compared to last year quarter two, if I were to compare to this year quarter two, the drawback rates have changed. They are going to not be different from quarter three, but they were different from up to quarter two. Uh, and uh, we have really not seen the benefit of, uh, you know, we benefited quite a bit on currency last year because of ages, but it has been other way around till uh, now and maybe till December. So the effect of improved uh, as we complete our expansion program in garment and as we go nearer to the market prices for all the inputs and outputs, uh, including currency, uh, there is a good amount of margin uptake possibility. This assume or does not assume all other things which we are doing in terms of innovations and new products. So, so there is a, we are very, very, I would say, uh, very, very, uh, you know, uh, uh, happy about the plan that we have and we are very, very, very clear that textile business not only will see growth, but also significant improvement in margin in medium term, as well as a sharper, much, much sharper improvement in return on capital employed. Okay. I think good, uh, good to hear that. 
just the last question and that's on uh, on the balance sheet side which uh, we don't have an the balance sheet of the brand business for the half yearly is there but when we met the last time and even in the previous con call there was an, an emphasis is on that that we want to constrain the working capital and improve the balance sheet of the brand business so i think or probably what where what kind of any we want to improve the inventory turns reduce the receivable days and others is there an a meaningful traction is happening on that side uh yeah, suresh can elaborate on that uh so we will have to see the trend lines there uh and they are september and september of the last year are not comparable but where, if i look at it where we are and where we are likely to be by march uh, march end we are clearly seeing the targets that we have being achieved and it's going to be one of the reasons why our return on capital employed we are hoping to almost double by end of the year compared to last year i mean last year we did what 4 5 6% kind of an roc yeah so we are saying it should be double digit this year is what our internal target is okay good for our branch business not the company as a well. whole yeah Yeah, yeah, I got it on the brand business side. And if Suresh can explain that what all exactly is happening on the uh, working capital side, that would be really helpful. No, I think uh, uh, Molly, you know, we have taken a target that uh, we will try and you know do uh, the growth uh, with probably no increase in inventory, which means almost 10 days reduction in uh, inventory days uh, compared to last year. If you remember, last year we dropped inventory days or reduced inventory days by 15 days. so we have taken a further target of 10 days reduction in the current year and uh, uh, close to 50, uh, 20 days reduction in the debtors uh, days uh, because debtors days had gone up last year uh, i think we are uh, well on course to achieve uh, this and in terms of the trend line i think uh, we have dropped 4 um, days in uh, debtors uh, compared to what we were in uh, march uh, the, which i think is significant because uh, Uh, end of September, typically you end up with the higher debtor days because you would have invoiced a lot to the channel uh, for the festival season. But in spite of that, we have been able to drop four days, and uh, inventory again uh, we are under uh, no control. We are uh, again four days we have uh, dropped compared to last year, and uh, uh, we are. I mean, we have a very very tight uh, program uh, whereby you know we want to end the year with uh, whatever we had committed at the beginning of the year, 85 days in terms of inventory and. Uh, uh 65 days in terms of debtors okay okay good thanks and wish you all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of nihal jham from edelweiss please go ahead hi sir uh, good evening to the entire management so the first question was on the textile business uh, we see that the average cotton price is around 115 for q2 whereas the current price of cotton more in the range of higher than 125 so is it that we are holding on inventory and starting q3 you will see the cotton prices that we procure going higher um there is no significant price movement uh, in the cotton that we are seeing and i think i must uh, also tell you that whilst we are looking at cotton as uh, as an indicator of cost in our uh, in our review note as well uh more than uh, as we have been uh, saying that we are not investing in the entire chain of textiles a uh, significantly more quantity of yarn is being bought than the cotton is being consumed by us so if i were to look at our our entire sales more than 55 60% of our uh, sale is on bought out yarn rather than on bought out cotton so the effect of cotton increase or uh, cotton prices or yarn prices having gone up is already factored in our quarterly or half yearly numbers so on the balance 40% we are not seeing a big significant change as things stand today it can change but as things stand today we are not seeing a significant change in the cost of cotton so so in the coming quarters we don't see cotton prices or even yarn prices impacting our margins in a textile business as things stand today no okay so sure. so my uh, following questions on the brand and detail business uh, uh, Mr. Suresh, you you mentioned about the 20% growth number, and uh, I think uh, a year and a half back, when there was a change in regulation on e-commerce, generally there was an expectation that you will see a fall in discounting. 
However, the recent season has proved that that still continues strong. So, in that background, you how do you see the challenges going forward, and is this 20% number still achievable? Uh, no, actually, uh, we are uh, probably you know at the uh, forefront in terms of you know uh, doing well in e-commerce. First of all, I think we have drawn out an agreement with uh, the e-commerce players like Flipkart and Amazon, where we have said that <coughs> pricing will be in our control. Uh, so generally, you will find that as far as our brands are concerned, at uh, price you see in the uh, any of these website, and you go to the store, the price will be the same. And if you see a discount in um, any of our brands, it's because it's a whole season merchandise. So anyway, which we want to uh, discount and uh, liquidate. So with that control, and then working very closely with them, because uh, what e-commerce does is uh, throw up a lot of uh, information about the consumer. So very, working very closely with the e-commerce uh, player, we have been able to develop you know propositions which are e-commerce exclusive, which I think has enabled our brands to be among the top uh, five brands you know consistently with the e-commerce uh, uh, players. So you may not find you know some of the categories um, uh, which we do in e-commerce in our stores. For example, our footwear is doing exceedingly well uh, in e-commerce, which you may not see so much in our uh, stores. Uh, so that's the way we are actually utilizing the uh, e-commerce. And uh, another uh, thing which we have done, uh, which again is the, probably the first in the market, we have even connected our store inventory to the e-commerce uh, players. So which means uh, a consumer who goes into, say, Mintra, uh, also get access to our store inventory and the pricing will be similar to what we sell in our store. Uh, so I think that has also started yielding some good uh, results because... Uh, Mintra do not buy all the range, you know, from us. Whereas uh, consumer, you know, will get the benefit of uh, getting the complete range when they dip into our store uh, inventory. So I think uh, it is not just, you know, selling in e-commerce is what we are pursuing. Um, we are working, you know, closely uh, with them and then trying to create propositions which are e-commerce specific and also working on technology. How do we integrate, you know, uh, the inventory and give a one view of inventory to the consumer across all channels. So I think uh, we have a very, very healthy growth, uh, not only in terms of the absolute percentage growth, but also in terms of the margin uh, from e-commerce uh, sales. Right. So, so you don't uh, see, say you mentioned that the fall in September LTL could be related to the higher discounting that happened in that month idly. And is it that if this discounting, say, stays aggressive, that the LTLs in the future could be impacted? Uh, see, we have to be, uh, I think, uh, watchful uh, about, you know, how the consumers are uh, buying. Uh, see, we should not be blindly telling that, you know, we will open 100 stores and 150 stores like the way we used to do. Uh, so we are very careful in uh, opening the uh, stores, you know, and we also get the data from e-commerce players, for example. If you find demand coming from a certain place and then uh, there are no stores there, we can actually start a store there. And we also identifying uh, markets uh, like in smaller towns, you know, like uh, tier three uh, towns. Uh, for example, if I take our US Polo business, uh, there are 320 uh, tier three towns in the country and we have only uh, presence in 55 towns and they are doing very well, those 55 towns. So we are looking at, you know, opportunities, opportunities to expand, you know, distribution uh, like that. But coming to LTL, I think uh, it's more to do with the base effect uh, because we are seeing a good uptake in LTL in the current uh, festival month. So it's uh, more to do with the, um, of course, we have to be watchful and make sure that, you know, uh, because ultimately we cannot control the consumers. If they are going to buy in e-commerce, uh, we cannot control them. We have to be sure that we are available to the consumer in whichever channel they are buying and uh, make sure that our brand is protected in whichever channel they are buying. Sure. So, uh, the question on the other brands uh, that includes, uh, I'll even include Gap and Sephora as you take uh, separately. Yeah. But there, the growth uh, has been 20% where well, I think the past used to be 40. I understand the base uh, impact may have come in, but still, you would expect brands which are, say, reasonably young to grow higher. And secondly, the margin improvement in these brands, uh, is it below expectation? Because most of the EBITDA improvement in the brand and retail is still being driven by our power brand business. So there, was, there is an expectation that maybe you will see a faster improvement in your brand and retail margins coming in also from the other brands also. So just your comment on uh, this segment. 
No, I think, uh, see, uh, our focus is actually to drive the profitability. Uh, so, which means that uh, our expansion, you know, uh, will not be, for see, when we open stores, uh, we cannot expect the store to deliver uh, profit from year one. Uh, so, when you have a bunch of brands and then you open many stores, then you will have an impact on the uh, bottom line. So, what we are trying to do is to consolidate and then uh, make them profitable, which is what I think we have achieved in uh, quarter two. And while the margin, percentage margin may not be very high, from the EBITDA swing, uh, we have 11 crore swing compared to the last year uh, numbers. Uh, not 11 crore positive EBITDA, but uh, from a negative uh, to uh, positive, there is an 11 crore uh, swing. This and is what the I'm talking about emerging uh, brands. Emerging, emerging brands, okay. Yeah. So, as far as Gap and uh, Sephora is concerned, Sephora is already profitable even last year. So, there is no concern as far as Sephora is concerned. In fact, uh, we are scaling up uh, Sephora. One of the reasons why uh, our growth also uh, is going to be very high in the second uh, half is because we couldn't open any Sephora store in first half because of availability of re 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 I mean, real estate. We are having actually five to six store coming up in uh, current month and next month, which will actually substantially, you know, again, uh, increase the sales of uh, Sephora. So, Sephora is not a concern and I think gap concern is also now coming uh, lesser and lesser because of uh, more domestic uh, production and we have been able to do both uh, in terms of improving our margin as well as uh, reducing the prices and make the brand more appeal to, uh, increasing the appeal of the brand to the consumers. Okay. Sure, sir. Just one last question on the DMG. If I had to understand, say, the financials of the new textile entity that we formed, would the standalone financials for the last uh, four or five years be reflective or there would be some other subsidy to include in that? I have not understood your question, but uh, basically, Arvind Limited consolidated minus brand and retail segment and minus engineering is what will be Arvind Limited afterwards. Okay. Sure, I'll take this offline with you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kashyap Pujara from Axis Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, most of my questions have been answered. I just wanted to basically take your sense on the industry. Uh, October saw actually quite a bit of festive uh, festivities across uh, India. And uh, despite uh, so many, you know, events, the at least the feedback that we are getting on we are getting on the ground is that the, that the demand uh, continues to be uh, sluggish what is your thoughts on uh, you know the current festive season and uh, how do you see the demand shaping up so uh, sorry uh, can answer in a more detailed uh, well but in general the for the whole of this year the markets have been uh, tougher than what uh, we would have expected in the beginning of the year. Uh, having said that, of course, uh, we are seeing a good uh, like to like growth in the festive period uh, and overall growth as well as Grace said that one would expect to grow at a rate higher than 20% in quarter 3. But the, the markets are not in a, in stock market terms, bullish phase. So, uh, yeah, Suresh, you can answer. Uh, yeah, I think um, you answered the same thing, uh, Jeshbe. I think overall, if you take uh, on a macro level, I think consumer sentiment has not been good at all uh, over the last, uh, I think, uh, almost for a couple of years now. Uh, so that is, uh, I think, uh, given. Uh, but when typically, you know, what happens when uh, festival, we always see the festival start coming from Onam in uh, Kerala, which actually completely got uh, washed out. So that one bit of sale uh, we just didn't get uh, this year. Um, then uh, then Dashara, then uh, Diwali. Uh, Dashara actually has done exceedingly well. Two states are uh, significant from Dashara point of view. Uh, I mean, uh, two, uh, the entire eastern region and Andhra Pradesh. Uh, this part of this geographies have done exceedingly well during uh, Dashara. In fact. Uh, we had a high double a double digit uh, kind of a like to like uh, during dashara market post dashara um, uh, typically you know the demand should really pick up for uh, diwali uh, so we saw a dip uh, one week post uh, dashara which i think you know uh, then the demand for the diwali didn't pick up immediately after dashara as normally it happens 
but it started picking up from the last weekend uh, which i think is a good sign so we are uh, again you know seeing a lot of momentum and uh, even during weekdays the sales have been pretty good so we are hoping that uh, that momentum of dashara uh, festive which started uh, should continue into diwali in spite of that one you know, dip during interim uh, week so the, the point is that you know the sales that you know were lost out because of own uh, men neither did you know we get a sense that okay durga puja or you know some other things which happened navratri really were that chunky dashara was weak while for us i mean for you know it was patchy across states at least for us that you're saying that there is some growth but do you think that you know this uh, sale momentum that you're seeing right now can make up for the lost uh, month or so in october i mean not just for you but for the industry as a whole do you see that uh, you know the coming few days will be able to make up for the entire month see i'm not uh, definitely we are not going to make up in coming uh, few days because we are def- we don't have any deficit as far as the festival is concerned and uh, i don't i'm not talking uh, on behalf of others i'm talking from our point of view is uh, we are 3% short on our committed uh, growth number uh, which we are hopeful to cover in the second uh, half and as far as the festival goes i think we are on track in terms of our own uh, targets and where we are uh, today uh, what i told was there was a dip in sales uh, in the interim period between dashara and uh, it typically dashara ends there are two weeks of diwali uh, so uh, immediately after dashara there was an uh, dip of uh, no sales for three four days which has now picked up so i don't see any problem in we achieving the target which we set ourselves for the festival uh, period sure that's encouraging thank you so much and all the best thank you the next question is from the line of tejas shah from spark capital please go ahead hi uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, jesh bhai just uh, on as 115 uh, if you can help us understand the impact of uh, this regulation on pnl and uh, cash flow versus earlier method and uh, should we change our way of looking at margins because denominator gets inflated under this method so uh, honestly it is not affecting the entire 100% of the sales because the wholesale was always uh, outright it affects only some part of the business so out of uh, you know the like quarter quarter 2 the sales changing uh last year xor sales was the 96 crores uh so uh, we are grossing it up by 9 so our sales are going up by 96 crores in the quarter 2 of the last year uh this year that sale is 60 or 62 crores so our sales this time are getting grossed up by 62 so in effect you will see that you know our sales on a reported basis will look 9% growth instead of 13% growth because the sor sales have changed however uh, it is not so significant on the entire 4000 5000 crore turnover so in a year it will change of by say 3 to 400 crores uh so it about 8 10% uh, change uh maybe it will affect the margin by a few percentage po- i mean uh, basis points but not significant to change the complete basis on which you were looking at margin yes funny and, uh, and how does this uh, is different from uh, previous method from from uh, concept perspective so uh, okay so what uh, typically you know the the difference is that in the earlier times we used to sell to a departmental store uh, say uh we will we used to dispatch goods without recording sale uh and as and when they used to sell uh, at say 2000 rupees a shirt we used to report uh, uh 35% less so 1300 rupees sale in our account and they used to report 2000 rupees sale in their account and purchase at 1300 and that's how it used to get done uh the new uh standard says that effectively when you have sold it on an sor it effectively your sale is when they sell and as a result you should book the sale at a price at which they sell which is 2000 rupees so now as as and when they make a sale the store makes a sale we record sale at 2000 instead of 1300 rupees 
ओके एज अ रिजल्ट एंड यू वी रिकॉर्ड सेवन हंड्रेड रुपीज एज अ कॉस्ट ऑफ कमीशन और वट एवर यू कॉल इट एज अ रिजल्ट द सेल्स केस क्रॉस्ड अप बाय सेवन हंड्रेड रुपीज एंड द कॉस्ट केस क्रॉस्ड अप बाय सेवन हंड्रेड रुपीज तो प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी डजन प्रॉफिट्स डोंट चेंज प्रॉफिट मार्जिन स्लाइटली डिप्स बट द सेल्स केट इन्फ्लेटेड टू दैर एक्सट and sales is recorded only when uh, retail offtake happens so retail yes. happens yes yes so that way it doesn't change except the number change you know the cost and the sales both go up by in my example 700 rupees okay uh, uh following questions for suresh uh, yeah sir you mentioned that uh, 20% growth guidance remains intact for the brand business uh, and we are parallelly also working on improving our trade terms because uh, Uh, so so this looks slightly challenging because what we have seen in past uh, with other players also whenever they go into that trade terms consolidation mode uh, growth aspirations take a back seat or they they compromise a bit on growth uh, growth trajectory so just wanted to understand how are you expecting to balance the both no i think uh, you are uh, right uh, we are taking some you know um, uh, strong actions in terms of the trading uh, terms uh, so uh, what i would say is that as far as this year is concerned the priority is to reduce the working capital so if it means that you know uh, probably you know we uh, compromise on you know to to couple of you know percentage on growth uh, we will do that uh, but definitely you know going towards a, a move, move to a double digit you know rosi uh, with the right uh, debtors profile uh, is our priority so what i we were mentioning about 20% growth is uh, we are assuming that we should be able to overcome the challenge and uh, achieve both uh, but definitely priority of the company as far as this year is concerned is to control the working capital uh, reduce the debtor days and even if it means uh, we give up you know couple of points in terms of growth sure this is helpful uh, thanks and uh, happy diwali to the whole team thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Shalin Kumar from UBS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, basically, uh, listening to your commentary, uh, the denim sector, the denim segment is 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 not so in, not doing so great, and uh, and I see that volume have been more or less flat, but then the, then your realization have gone up. Uh, so, should we read that some currency benefit is coming in here, and same with other segments as well? uh no shalin uh, you know uh, the the uh price will depend upon the product that we have not necessarily the contribution for the business so uh many a times we have very you know expensive products which uh, go through lot of processes and lot of chemical applications which not necessarily to give you in percentage margin so uh, to answer your question whether we have any currency hedge or benefit answer is absolutely no uh, whether this 190 is a sustainable price not necessarily it may come down to 180 doesn't necessarily mean that our profits will come down it is all a function of the product mix you know or the kind of cotton or kind of chemicals or dyes we use got 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 it uh, jai bhai uh, and then a value addition if i were to put it that sure 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 understood understood thanks, thanks. Uh, on uh, this thing uh, uh, on uh, india's uh, change uh, does it have any bearing on your balance sheet reporting as well i mean uh, it will it india's does not have impact on the balance sheet reporting but there is a there is a uh, the offshoot of indias which has a balance sheet impact which i will let me explain to you uh since uh, you know this uh, indias change when it came in the month of april a lot of retailers uh, chose to uh, switch their buying from us from it being sor to outright because theoretically what it would have meant that if you continue to uh, remain on sor and if the wholesale company like arvind or uh, any other wholesale company selling to them where to report sales at in my earlier example 2000 rupees mm-hmm. uh, 
that mental store will have to report their sale not at 200 but only commission of 700 okay Okay. which meant that their sales would drop uh, optically uh, as a result uh, they some department stores decided to switch the arrangement from uh, SOR to outright purchase so if you recollect in our quarter one results we said that our though on paper our, our turnover growth was 31, but we said that actually that's uh, not a true growth because there was a one-time sale that we received because what we had not shown as sales and shown as inventory became a sale. And as a result, we also on 10 crore one-time profit, which we both excluded during our analysis, if you remember, in quarter one. Yes. The outcome of this is that when we reported, when we used to report sales on or when we were having a transaction based on SOR, we used to keep inventory in our books and not debtors and we used to not report sales. Now we are reporting sales and not reporting inventory but reporting account receivable. So you will see one time impact of increase in account receivable and one time impact of reduction in inventory uh, on account of on account of this change, so a profit of 10, 15 crores that we got uh, got booked in the in Q1. Uh, to that extent, the debtors would be higher, or the working capital will go up. Okay, 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 okay. Thanks. Uh, if just last one more bit uh, on this uh, advanced material and engineering. The the margin swing over here uh, is it sustainable? Uh, so to answer your question, uh, for advanced materials, this margin is just, uh, you know, uh, first year of consolidation. So this is not a margin on which, I mean, we have invested large amount of money, return on capital is single digit, because we are, we are still not achieved its full potential. So we believe that margin should rise from here to a significantly higher level over next uh, couple of years as our revenue uh, cross goes towards uh, 1,000 crore mark. Uh, so would the return on capital employed. So it's, a, it's just the beginning of the, you know, turning positive after three years of uh, investments into this business. So uh, and profit should, our margin should improve. As far as engineering business is concerned, it will fluctuate on a quarterly basis based on what kind of orders or equipments deliver, uh, very, very specialized equipment versus a very, you know, commodity equipment. But on a medium term of a year, of four quarters, if I were to take, uh, I would think that a margin as we have guided uh, of what we achieved last year, 25-27% is what we should be able to uh, maintain. Sure, sure. Sure, Josh, right. thank you so much for this. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Samir Agarwal for closing comments. Yeah, thank you all for joining the conference today. We will meet you on next quarter on the call again. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.